Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate a really fun and easy butterfly applique. And you're going to draw it yourself and it is super, super easy. So let's take a look at this butterfly. Now this might look complicated, but trust me, it is not. So there's three layers to this butterfly two for the wing and one for the body and I've chosen three different colors two solids and a print but you can do it any way you want get very creative with this so let me show you how to draw this really simple butterfly pattern now here's the overall pattern it's approximately a six inch square. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to start out with a square and draw a whole bunch of circles. For the body, you're just drawing a long tube. So let's break it down layer by layer. Now here is how you make the tube. So let's focus up here. You're going to draw two lines six inches long, three-eighths of an inch wide and you're going to round both ends okay just freehand round them it doesn't have to be perfect okay this is folk art this is not an exact science here now for the body the butterfly wings you're going to start out by drawing a six inch circle then you're going to draw two more lines in the middle so at the three inch mark you're going to draw a line straight down and then over here at the three inch the center you're going to draw it straight across straight across now you're going to start drawing your circles you're going to draw two circles up here that are three inches in diameter and two that are two inches in diameter now the circle templates that I'm using, I've had these for 20 years and they still look pretty good. They're a little beat up, but they still work. You can purchase this, it's in a package of, uh, I think there's five sizes in the package. You can purchase them in a fabric store, craft stores, and even on the internet. Or draw your own circles if you're good at doing circles. All right, so take your three inch circle and you're gonna just push it right up against the two inside straight lines until it touches. Then go ahead and trace around the circle. Go over here and do the same thing. Trace around it. Now for the lower one, you're going to take your two inch circle and do the same thing and then over here. Trace around it easy okay now you're going to make sure you draw all of this onto cardstock thin cardboard look for some thin cardboard in your house or you can purchase thin sheets of cardstock uh, supermarkets uh, drug stores discount stores it's everywhere office supply stores or tear those cereal boxes apart that's also a nice choice too so then cut it out after you've drawn it cut on the curved line so let me show you how to make the smaller butterfly now remember the first square was six inches now you're going to do a four inch square at the two inch mark draw a line and another two inch mark over here and draw a line now you're going to take your two inch circle and trace around it, do the same thing, push it into where it touches those sides, draw around it. Now take your little itty bitty one inch circle, do the same thing, and then over here. Then after you've traced it, cut this one out on the curved lines only, not on your straight lines. And when you're done, you're going to have three templates here. So here's the larger wings, Here's the next one, and then here is the body of the butterfly. Really easy, and you can use these templates 
over and over again to make multiple butterflies in a bunch of different colors if you want. So now you want to take your two-sided fusible web. It comes in sheets of about 9 inches by 12. It's got two layers of paper. One side is plain. The other side has grid lines on it. These little thin grid lines. And in between those two layers is a thin layer of paper. So you're going to take your templates, all three pieces, and trace them out. Trace all three and just draw around your template and there you go. So draw all three onto the fusible web. Then you're going to cut it out of your sheet. Remember I said it comes in a large sheet. But when you cut it out, you want to leave about a fourth of an inch. Doesn't need to be exact. You can see how choppy it is. But just make sure you've got a little bit extending out past your drawn lines. Now you're going to be taking the paper off of the back and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Now, here is my fabric that I'm going to put this butterfly on. This is the front side. Then this is the back side. You're going to put your traced picture here on the back side of your fabric. But before you can do that, remove the thin paper on the back. If you're having a hard time getting it to lift up, take a straight pin and score it. That'll tear the paper a little bit. Then bend it and then pull this paper off. Make sure that the glue isn't sticking to this waxy paper. And this is tacky there so I know that the glue is still on that grid line paper. Remove all this off, then lay it down on top of the back side of your fabric and finger press it real, 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 real good. And then with a small pair of scissors, you're going to cut on your drawn lines. Okay? There you go. Cut out all three layers of the butterfly. And this is what one of them looks like. See that? Isn't that pretty? But I still got the grid line paper there. Don't worry, we're going to get rid of that in a minute. So, take your background fabric. Now, if you're going to make the pot holder like I did, I recommend you cut out an 8 inch square of fabric. And I'm putting it on the diagonal because I eventually want to make it a hanging pot holder like the first one you saw in the video. And I'll show that again to you in a moment. So, if you want to do it that way, place it on the diagonal and you want to make sure that this little dip in the butterfly faces right into that corner and then going into that corner. And don't finger press it yet because you can still lift it up easily and shift it if it's not aligned properly. Once you have it to where you want it, then go ahead and finger press it real good all over. Now take your next layer of the butterfly. Remove the paper off of the back again. Then lay it down. Set it down and you can lift and shift it. And how you want to line it up is take this little dip and point it towards that one and here and then try to center it across here if you can. Once you've got it the way you like it, finger press it down. Last part of the body Take the paper off of the back, then place it down. I usually will have about a half inch sticking out up here at the head of the butterfly and about an inch down here at the tail. Once you've got it lined up properly, finger press it down. Now you want to go to your ironing board. Don't do this on your cutting mat. All right, do it at your ironing board or on one of those thick pressing pads if you have one of those. Take a plain piece of cloth and just lay it down on top of your butterfly. Now, the instructions on the fusible web package will tell you to place a damp cloth. Now, I don't run off to the kitchen and put it in the sink to get it wet. I just always have a spray bottle of water near my ironing board and I will just spray it down. Give it a good spritz because it needs to be damp. Now, 
using a hot iron with steam. Remember, don't do this on your cutting mat. Place it down. Read your package instructions. It's probably going to tell you to hold it there 12 to 15 seconds. Give it a little burst of steam and then lift. Set it down. Give it another little burst of steam. Hold it there for 12, 15 seconds. Then you're done with the fusing process. Now I usually let it cool down before I do applique stitches. Alrighty. Now let's talk about applique stitches. Now, let me get this down. When you're going to do your applique stitches, it's very important to use tearaway stabilizer or thin paper. Now, your tearaway stabilizer can be purchased in a fabric store and you can purchase it on the internet. I like to use thin paper because it's less expensive and I can get it at my hardware store because I don't live near a big fabric store. I have to order a lot of stuff on the internet. So we do have a hardware store and you can get this in the paint department and it comes in 6 inch widths and 12 inch width. Okay, so now place that behind your background fabric. Then you're going to select your stitches. Now if you've never done machine applique, I'm just going to give you a couple of suggestions to get you started. Look at your decorative stitching. Many of the new machines have a few decorative stitches on it. So look to see if you have a satin stitch. Now on my machine, I have three different sizes of satin stitch. Small, medium, and large. If you're going to use the satin stitch on your butterfly, I recommend on the wings you maybe use this medium size and on the body use the smaller one. Now these are just recommendations, okay? You can choose whatever one you want if you like it. Now one of my favorite machine applique stitches is this one. It kind of gives it a folksy folk art look and I happen to like that look a lot. So you can also use this one. It's another great choice. Now when you're done doing your machine applique you, or your stitches, you just go ahead, turn it over and rip the paper off or the stabilizer off. So let's look at my sample one more time so I can show you what threads I selected here really quick. For my green wing, I used green thread. And for this print, I wanted this pink to really pop out. So I selected some thread that would help this come out. So it's somewhat of a matching color. But for the body, I just chose blue. So you can choose to use colors of thread that really stand out or you can use it to where it just sort of falls into the background. So you can do whatever you like. Now if you're interested in making this into a pot holder, I always tell people that are getting started in sewing, start out with a pot holder. That way you won't get so frustrated. So if you want to make this hanging pot holder, click on the link in the upper right hand corner. It's called How to Make a Hanging Pot Holder. Or if you want to make a bunch of butterflies and put it into a table runner, there's another link popping up in there that shows you how to make a basic table runner and you can string a bunch of butterflies all over the top or make a big quilt. I have lots and lots of quilting videos so you want to stay informed so you can keep up on all my quilting videos. And how you do that is to go ahead and click on my subscribe buttons. One of them, I've got two. There's one down there in the lower right hand corner, another one up in the left hand corner that's a round picture of my face. Click on either one of those. YouTube's then going to prompt you for your email address. Enter that information and the next time I have a new video, YouTube will send you a brief email with a big button in the center. You click on it and the next time I have a new video, it takes you directly to that new video of mine. Now I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room and I'm going to see you next time and happy sewing.